fluffy unicorns dancing on rainbows. Pink fluffy unicorns dancing on rainbows. Pink fluffy unicorns dancing on rainbows. <sighs> you know, throughout most of the show, I never really have heard that many songs to stray from the normal music. I mean, sure, there are still many great and memorable songs from the show, but they just mainly follow the basic rules of music, making it hard for me to find something new to say about them. I just feel like Daniel Ingram can do more than just. Those vampire bats will give you a fright. Eating apples both day and night. They rest for a minute, maybe three. Then they're eating every apple in your apple tree. <laughs> I knew it! Those vampire bats will give you a fright. Eating apples both day and night. They rest for a minute, maybe three. Then they're eating every apple in your apple tree. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my little musical analysis, a part of my channel where I look over and analyze the music of MLP. Today we probably have what I like to say is my favorite song today from Daniel Ingram, Stop the Bats, a wonderful little homage to the music of Danny Elfman, and let to be one of, if not the most complex song of the entire show as of late. But what about this song is complex? I mean, as many of you can tell, that this isn't your standard fair song. But other than that, what else does this song have to offer? So yeah, this song as you can hear is heavily inspired by the works of composer Danny Elfman, whose works consisting of composing many of Tim Burton's films such as The Nightmare Before Christmas, Beetlejuice, and the Tim Burton Batman films. Elfman knows how to write music that can mix light and happy and dark and mysterious just in one piece of song alone. And honestly, I think Ingram and his team did a fantastic job doing that. The music, while being in a minor and dark key, it still has these bright moments that help out, especially when Fluttershy sings, because it fits her better than this darker tone that Applejack sings. It just works extremely well, and I respect them doing something like that. Holy mother of molestia. Does this song have some interesting chords in it? And I'm only talking about chords, not the actual progressions. So, you all know what major and minor chords are right now. Mostly for me talking about them in my previous reviews. Well, there are more than just your basic major, minor, blah blah blah. I think you get the picture right now. Anyways, let's talk about sevenths chords. Sevenths chords are like any other chords, really. So, basically, in the key of C major, a 1 7 would be C E G, and then an added B. There are other seven chord types, but in this song, they're only used major seventh chords, so I'll only be talking about them. These chords can pop up anywhere in the progression, though most often used in 1, 4, 5, or 7. Seventh chords are most often used in jazz though, and are used in some of the most basic jazz progressions. Here however, it's only used a couple times in the beginning and the middle. Sure, it's in major, but it adds a bit of dissonance to the chord, just to give it a little bit more of an interesting sound. Also there are a few augmented chords in here, augmented chords basically being a major chord, but with a raised fifth. Really, that's all there is for chords, but there's still a lot more to the song than that. Progression-wise, this does all the normal progressions that one would expect, but they sound more interesting because it's in a minor key, meaning the usual major one is a minor one, and then so on and so forth. Basically, if you want to understand a minor key, it's a step and a half down. Again, for an easy example, the relative minor in C major would be A minor, because it's a step and a half down in the key signature or the 6th scale degree of the major scale. Back on topic of the song, it's about the same, using progressions from 1 to 5 to 1 to 3. Basically, this is a good time to remind you that music doesn't follow the rules, and if you look at the progressions, you can see what I mean. They are all the same, but they all sound completely different at the same time. But what they make sure to do is end on the tonic of the scale at the end of the phrase, which they do when they aren't using the different conditional ending. They just do everything right. And again, while it does not break any barriers in terms of music theory, it still lends itself to an interesting sound. Also, there's a little section here that I like. Here, have a listen. They're big and ugly and mean as sin. Will you look at the state my trees are in? Hear that? Basically, minus AJ singing and a few parts here and there, all the instrumental backing is playing one note in an ascending and descending pattern. 
This is something me and many other people like to call a monophonic texture, basically it being described as one tone music. Even though there is the melody that AJ sings, so this probably wouldn't be considered true monophonic texture, but it's pretty close. Again, like most everything in music, does many other textures as well, but most of the song is in polyphonic texture, basically being a melody line and backup instrumental with little harmonies, which the song doesn't work around harmonies that much, but that neither helps or hinders the song. Everything this song has when it comes to instrumentation just works well, even if it's not as well grand as say stuff from like Candlelight Wedding or even At The Gallop, because... I mean, come on, that stuff's from the season finales of the show. Of course they're going to have much more sicker orchestrations to it. Yet, to hear an orchestration like this in only one of the normal... Well, I wouldn't say normal because Fluttershy gets turned into a freaking bat this episode, so it's kind of weird. <laughs> Still, hearing something like this is nice. And while I like simpler instrumentations for songs that the first few seasons had, like So Many Wonders, Raise This Barn, and, well, almost all the Pinky songs... However, the running theme I've seen with the season, especially when it comes to the songs, is that the show is getting more sicker and sicker with its orchestrations. Save for one country style song that I'll be talking about later on, yet I like this move on arranging these songs because really the thing that made Danny Elfman's music work so well was its huge orchestration. It helps with the mood of each song even more than the lyrics do, which is what music is supposed to do, expression emotions through music. If you just use the lyrics to get your emotions across, you overall are going to have a much weaker song. So again, the way Stefan Andrews orchestrates this works really well, and again, helps with the entire Elfman style that they're going for, and makes for great backing to the banner between Fluttershy and AJ. As a musician, music series student, and passionate film music fan, a song like this is something I've dreamed of the show trying to do. Complex chords and interesting progressions mixed with a nice melody and mixtures of textures, makes this a really satisfying song for me. If you are a fan of any kind of Danny Elfman composition, it's more than likely that you'll be humming this tune for at least a week. I highly recommend it to anyone though, because no matter what, I feel like you'll be thoroughly entertained by it. Well, those were my thoughts on Stop the Bats. This has been The Music Reborn. See y'all next time. No